Alright, so in this video we're going to introduce you to the Kokal software, show you how to get started with that, and complete the first assignment. And uh, the first thing to do is to access it and create an account. So uh, you just search for CoCalc. Uh, then it's the first thing that comes up. CoCalc, Collaborative Calculation in the Cloud. So CoCalc.com. Right. And from here you can create a free CoCalc account. So I'm going to click on that. All right. I'm going to go ahead and create an account. Put in my name and email address. And then create a password. And hit sign up. And you can have it remember your password if you want. All right. Now you got to have projects to create assignments. Uh, I think a project is like a big folder to contain all your assignments. So you probably have one for each class. And this may be the only class you ever use it for, but you still need one. Uh, Math 279 can be the name of your project. Whatever you want. So I'm gonna create a project. There we go. So now you can click on this to get into that project. So click on that and get into the project. All right, now we need to create a file. And so we're going to hit plus here. I guess you can hit plus here. But I'm used to hitting it here. And uh, what we're going to primarily be doing is creating Sage worksheets. All right, so click on Sage worksheet. And here you go, blank worksheet. Now you won't be writing a whole bunch from scratch. Typically be taking code I've written and provided and editing it. So. For assignment, there is an intro to CoCalc assignment here. So there's an example, I guess. Uh, let's see. I'm not sure exactly what happened there. Uh, but it should open up like this. And um, there's a lot in here because I wanted to kind of show you some real basic stuff first, just operations and things. And uh, sometimes there is extra blocks of code that we won't necessarily use. Um, so I would kind of look through what's there and then try to look at the assignment and find out what you specifically need to copy and paste and then do that one block at a time. So you can see we're just doing some basic stuff, defining a function, differentiating a function, uh, derivatives, integrals, basic calculus that is nice to do here. Um, and then the main procedures, I think, are here, verifying a solution. Now specifically, your first assignment is to verify that this function is a solution to this initial value problem. So let's find something similar to that, right? Verifying a solution. Oh, look, verifying a solution. Now, there's two examples, but I think that the closer one is the one here that has the second derivative, or is this a second derivative. So I'd probably copy this one. All right, so go ahead and copy and paste from the assignment I provided to your blank sheet, and then go ahead and hit the green button to run it and make sure that it works before you change anything. Now, if you get an error message here, then send me a message and let me know. These should work. All right. Um, you can make sure that it works because you, you will see the error message if there are any. They're very bright and red. And also, the output should be the same as the output that is shown on what I provided. Now, we want to understand what's going on, how this works, and how we can edit it. Uh, important thing to bring up is that the words following the pound sign on any given line are comments, and those are not read by the computer, those are just directions from me to you. So you should read those, and they should tell you what each line of the code does. If you want to put comments yourself in, just make sure you put the pound symbol in front of them. The other stuff is the actual code that it reads. You can see that x equals var x tells CoCalc that x is a variable. 
and then y equals x times e to the x plus e to the x defines the equation. So define x, now you define an equation between y and x. Notice that we do need to put multiplication symbols in. There's no implied multiplication, not even with parentheses. So always use the asterisks for that. And then the last line in checking is to actually have it calculate the differential equation based on the proposed solution. And uh, if the differential equation is set to zero, well then you are able to check that this equals zero. So this is required that you set the differential equation equal to zero from the beginning. All right, now for your problem. So you'll be replacing the solution with this, y equals x squared, one plus natural log of x. And uh, so you can go in here and change this, x exponent two times, notice I have the times in front of the parentheses, one plus ln parentheses x. And it does automatically close the parentheses as soon as you open them up, so you don't have to worry too much. They're also color-coded, so you can tell which one you're opening and closing and when you highlight it. All right. And you can change the commented stuff here to go along with your problem if that helps. All right. Now you get to this part, and this is the differential equation we're checking, but notice that it is not set equal to zero. So in order for this to work, you do need to put everything on one side. Uh, you can subtract the second derivative or subtract this big fraction. That is up to you. I'm just going to go ahead and think of that equals as a minus, and then I'm going to put that in there. And that would go right here. So this, if you looked at the earlier part of the code, you know this diff y comma x comma 2. That's a second derivative. That's like y double prime and then minus, and then we'll need that big fraction. So what is that big fraction? 3xy prime minus 4y over x squared. So you need parentheses for the numerator. 3 times x times y prime. Minus 4 times y. Close parentheses, that's the top of the fraction. And then divide by x squared. You don't really need parentheses in the bottom here because it's just one operation, but it certainly doesn't hurt. And then close out the expand. Uh, expand is just going to make sure that it kind of simplifies all this together. So you can change this as well. All right, now we've made some changes to this code. We can go ahead and hit run again. And I think it did give us a zero. <laughs> when, when there's not gonna be any change in the output, it is kind of hard to say, so you can always just hit it a second time. Um, but yeah, that's actually recalculating and still giving us a zero because this, of course, is a solution to that new equation. All right. Now, uh, in the second part, we are constructing a direction field and plotting some integral curves. So let's go ahead and see what's similar to that in this sheet. Uh, we learn how to solve a basic equation. You learn how to plot a basic two-variable equation. And here we get to plotting a direction field, getting closer. And here we go, plotting a direction field with some integral curves. So I'm going to go ahead and copy and paste this line of code. And I'm going to run it before I change it, make sure it still works. All right. And, uh, you know, in this specific one, I, I, I took a specific solution in red and did it. You don't really need that for this. It's just an extra line of code. So I'm going to take out the red one because we don't have a specific one, right? And uh, that was takes out one of the plots, P, so get rid of that. And now let's go through the code. So we're defining our variables, x and y, our variables, x, y. 
and then this sum actually creates a whole bunch of plots of various versions of solutions. Remember when you solve a differential equation, much like an integral, you get an integration constant, and then that depends on your initial conditions. Um, well, so you, if you allow that to vary over a certain range of values, then you get a whole bunch of different solution curves. And that's what we're doing here. Um, and then this, of course, gives you the slope field, which is all the arrows in the background. All right, let me go ahead and run it since I did get rid of that red line, and there it is, much better. All right, now what's our specific problem? Well, our specific problem has the ODE, y prime equals y minus x cubed. So let's go ahead and change this here, right? Right, so the directional field, or slope field, you have to solve for y prime, and you put in the right side. So this is already solved for y prime, and we just got to put in the right side, which is y minus x cubed. So I'm going to do that, and then let's go ahead and run it again. Now we're not going to see the arrows matching the blue lines because I changed the arrows, but I haven't yet changed the blue lines. That's okay, I just wanted to make sure it still looks okay. And the arrows look pretty good, right? All right, now I need to change the blue lines. The blue lines come from the solutions. I don't know how to solve differential equations yet, so we gave you the solutions right here. All right, so you just go ahead and put this in for the solutions. That's c times e to the x, x cubed, 3x squared, 6x plus 6. So I'm going to cut out this part. And c is e to the x plus 6x cubed plus 6x plus 6. So it's 3x squared x cubed plus 3x squared plus 6x plus 6. x cubed plus 3x squared plus 6x plus 6. All right, and we hit run, and we get a warning, right? So this has variably going to happen, and uh, you want to, I did this on purpose to kind of show you what it looks like. If we mess up, uh, we will get a warning message, error message, and uh, you want to try to learn how to read these. Notice it says there's an error in line 2, right? Uh, now that doesn't count the commented lines, right? Or the ones above. It, it's just looking at this block of code, and it's not counting the two comments. So this is line 1, this is line 2. Well, we knew that was where the mistake was, because that's the only thing I changed. But later on, that's helpful to know what line you're looking in. And then specifically, look at this. It's writing what I wrote, and then it's saying, hey, there's a mistake right here. And there is. If you get to right here, you see that I forgot to do times. Can't just put 3x. It's got to be 3 times x. It's got to be 6 times x. All right? So that fixed one problem, but there's more. Look at this. C is not defined, but it is, isn't it? Isn't C the same as C? No. Actually, these are one's uppercase, one's lowercase, so you need to make them the same. Make them both capital C if you want. I'm going to make mine both lowercase c. All right, let's run it again. And it looks better, but it's ugly graph. All right, so um, ugly graphs are better than a red error message, but not as good as a pretty graph, and that's what we want for full credit. So how do we fix this? Well, you analyze what's going on. Often you have to change some parameters. When you're graphing, it's, it's all about your viewing window. I mean, these blue lines look, look gorgeous, but this slope field, those arrows are all squashed down. What controls that? Well, the slope field command line. And specifically, you tell it where you want your x's and where you want your y's. And your y's say to go up to 5. From negative 4 to 5, that's what it's doing. All right? But the blue lines, you don't say the y values because they're functions. It depends on what the x is. If you gave x's like this, then that's going to go up to 40. So let's just stretch the slope field out to make it match up with those lines. I'm going to make it go up to 40 instead. And it looks perfect. All right, so now we're ready to turn in our assignment. How do we do that? All right, so the best way to do that probably is to go to this button here. It says Convert to PDF. And then you hit Generate PDF. 
and it will give you a PDF. This has caused trouble in the past. Um, people using Explorer and just certain computers can give you trouble with this. Um, but I get a really nice PDF that has the output and it has the code and the comments and I can save that as a file. So let's put it on the desktop. Let's call it lab one. But if that does not work for you, if you get an error message with that, the other option is to do print, which is the button right next to save to PDF. Hit the print button, then you should be able to download and open a printed version. It's HTML. What happens if we open that? You get this, right? And, and then you can save that or print the file. Yeah, I think you want to then do print and then save that as a PDF. All right, so we've got our work saved in a PDF. Now we need to turn it in. So uh, we go to the lab assignment, and then we go to choose file, and then we find that file, and then we open up and attach it and hit submit, and we're good to go. And of course, we don't get any credit because it's not auto-graded. Wait for me to grade uh, after the deadline. Now, if we have problems, you can, of course, post in the forums about the error messages you're getting and how you can fix them. Um, you can also, if you're having a real hard time, you can share this. And uh, the way to do that is to hit this share button over here, I think. And uh, you got to make the item public. So whatever your Sage worksheet is, you're going to make it public. And then you need to share publicly. You can send this link here to me in an email or you can post it and then I will be able to actually look at your your file and you know instead of just seeing a picture of it I'll be able to interact with it um, so probably best way to if we're really having trouble to, to get to the bottom of an error message but um, otherwise that's it you should have a nice orientation to CoCalc and in the future you will get back to this you will have a CoCalc worksheet prepared ahead of time by me with comments, and then you'll have an assignment where you're changing the ODEs and the solutions and uh, some parameters to uh, show that you understand what's going on there. And I guess this is uh, freezing up flame. But that's just as good of a time as any because we did everything we needed to do. Um, so good luck with your CoCalcing, and let me know if you have any problems.